welcome back to Shem's Universe. So today, guys, we're going to discuss the 11th house of astrology. So of course, guys, we're almost at the last point now. This is a very high vibration house that we're dealing with. Once we got past the ninth, it's gotten to a lot higher vibrations, and we're getting to really um, our mark with the spiritual uh, realm. So what we have here with the 11th house, guys, is essentially your inner relationship with yourself, how your mind works. This is the most similar house to the third house when it comes to your learning and communication with family and friends but this more so pertains now to the relationship that you have with yourself and then how that relationship with yourself intertwines with your physical reality so the 11 just like in numerology is the bridge from the conscious to the subconscious world where i'm going with my channels i want you guys to understand astrology and numerology are one the same and that they actually intertwine with each other they agree on the numbers they agree on a lot of different things but you have to realize it before you're able to put it all together and utilize it as a cheat code. So right now we're just putting all these puzzle pieces together so you can have a broader understanding of what's going on in your reality each day. Okay, so with the 11th house, this has a lot to do with, like I said, interpersonal relationships, somewhat a bit of how you learn your family life, the quality of life that you have, and just your whole uh, contentment with how life is going. So this affects you throughout your whole life and you need to know the time in which you were born to get a full detailed report on how your chart actually works. So with that being said, let's get into the zodiac signs. So if you have Aries now in the 11th house, it's pretty good, it's aggressive. You have an aggressive inner world where you view life as war, you view life as a competition, and the people around you, friends and family, are either they're gonna be your ally or enemy. It's very binary in that respect, and I, I really think that's healthy. Uh, the world that we're living in, especially if you're in Western countries like myself, Canada, America, England, it's all about capitalist society, it's all about getting money, getting resources, and getting yourself out of the nine to five uh, slave wage. So you need to be able to have that sort of mindset if you have Aries in the 11th house in order to really accelerate the process and really get yourself out of uh, being in poverty. Aries is very good. Um, the only thing that you have to watch out for is that people that just genuinely want to be your friend and maybe they're not going to undertake within your business, maybe they're not going to want to be your ally in war per se, um, those type of people, I just say cut them off and get people that are more like-minded, but that is your choice. Uh, just watch out for people that may do still do have good intentions for you, but they're just not as um, warlike as you. They don't have that aggressive nature. Still take people into account on a personal level and not just a level of pragmatism. That'd be my main advice for the Aries. Uh, the next one I want to cover now is Taurus. Taurus is represented by Venus, as we know. So Venus, if you have that sort of um, energy in the 11th house, you're going to have an energy where... Everybody around you should be benefiting you to get money. You have very transactional relationships. Uh, even if it's not about money, it's going to be of some sort of value transaction that's very, very important to you guys. And that could bring forth good things because you, if for, to be successful in business, to be successful in life in general, you need to have a, what you would call a mastermind group in order to actually really accelerate that process and really get yourself to where you want to be in life. So you need to sort of have um, that sort of mindset of, having allies and having people around you that are actually going to help you get money and get luxury and get those resources in order to succeed and survive. However, if you're just doing that and using friends for those only reasons, you will not have true friends and you're going to have lack of contempt in your life when you actually do get your possessions that you want, but you won't have anybody to really share it with. So this can lead to problems with marital relationships as well. If you're just using somebody that you're, if you're a man, you're just looking for a wife that's just beautiful woman you're looking for a guy that's very powerful good looking and it's just more so vain that can have negative sort of outcomes as well so just be very careful of that uh, for gemini in the 11th house what we have here is somebody who likes to just really just talk uh the gemini in the 11th house is more so about having people that just share information talk about whatever's on their mind they're a jack of all trades master of none for the most part i'm a gemini so don't take that as disrespect uh, but i don't really have that in the 11th house but still nonetheless Gemini in general is like that. So if you have in the 11th house, you could be a very business-minded person. Your sun sign could say something completely different. But when it comes to the network of friends, your inner relationship, you're more so just about learning about the facts of the universe, learning about different religions, uh, going to towards God or your spiritual idol in that sort of way, in a very lighthearted, jovial sort of way. So it's it's very good. Um, the only thing to watch out for is that people, your friends may view you as scattered, not too serious. So make sure that you still do show them that you have aspirations and so forth and be somebody who's able to make uh, different material outcomes come to pass. Uh, for Cancer, 
what we have is somebody who views their family as their best of friends. They have a very, very warm uh, sort of uh, perspective on their family and friends. They look at everything from colleagues in work to people that they, um, people within their house, that their family. It's all one and the same as them. The world is pretty much like a family to these people. They're very warm, they're very giving, they're very open, very generous. They're not very secretive. The problem with that is you may have a very rare perspective on life in comparison to most other people and that's proven through these zodiac signs if you have that sort of perspective you could be taken advantage of you could be walked over you need to have a perspective of being warm and treating people like family but also understand that there's going to be a boundary and there's going to be outsiders to that said family because you cannot open up and be generous to people that do not deserve it there's snakes out there there's people that are actually going to hurt you and harm you if you use that open heart in every single situation that's my main advice for you guys you guys are very novel very intelligent very good at getting money regardless but it's just a matter of being a little bit too open could lead to disregard from some people and weaponization from more pragmatic uh, specimen uh, leo now is very much about image recognition so we have leo in the 11th house the leo views themselves as god king or queen emperor or empress they view they have this really strong sort of orientation towards themselves their spirit and what they can do it brings a lot of confidence and attracts a lot of good things to them a lot of luxury a lot of power and prestige however you guys will only choose friends that make you look good if you're a girl and you have leo in the 11th house you will not chill or hang out whatever you want to call it with another girl that's not good looking you guys are vain um, if you have if it's a guy same type of thing if you're somebody who likes to lift weights blah blah, blah you're not going to chill with people that are not doing that same type of thing and that's good but at the same time you you have superficial relationships in that sense and that could lead to weakness and deprivation in later parts of life so just make sure that you're watching how you actually invite friends and keep friends around you just because you don't want to have friends just for the wrong reason and in turn it just blows up in your face uh, for virgo we have somebody who likes to investigate and virgo is always the overanalyzer so when you get virgo in the 11th house they overanalyze religion to the point of zealotry uh, to the point where they're overanalyzing and then they'll depict and describe and research religion to the point where they don't believe it or they overly believe in it, it it gets unbalanced and that's the problem you could have that zealotry towards things that are your passion understand that you're going to be able to understand things but not fully understand anything science is always learning something new every single day the universe is always recreating and creating more things and destroying things every single day life and death is like on a continuum it's not a certain preset thing so when you understand that you understand the point that you need to really develop the stages of life where you're looking at things from a different perspective that I want to analyze, understand, but I don't want to overanalyze and then lead to just being paralyzed. So you need to always make sure that life is not in stagnation for you. You're keeping things in motion. If friends want to come and leave, let them come and leave. Don't be overcritical of that. Everybody has their own life path. If your family's going one way, you want to go the other way. Don't be overcritical of that. Go your own way and they may come back to you on this continuum that we call life. That's my main advice for the Virgos. For Libras, what we have is somebody who is very, very group oriented, very team oriented. So when it comes to family and friends, they kind of like cancers in the sense where they want to have that whole group dynamic where everybody's open, but not everybody, like I said, with cancer is like that. Uh, this is the most common one for people that have to go through one or two divorces. So be very, very careful when it comes to marriage in this house, just because you want to make sure that you're selecting a partner that's not only a good lover, but also the best of friends to you. If you don't get those two things, you're going to have a very, very big problem in the future. Next up is Scorpio. Scorpio is positive in the higher vibrations, guys. I know the lower vibrations, I was always saying bad things about Scorpio, da da da. The 10th house, Scorpio is one of the most powerful. In this house, Scorpio is the most powerful. Uranus Aquarius is what governs the 11th house. Scorpio is actually exalted in this house, giving it the ability to actually have deep and meaningful friendships that last a lifetime. This is the best house to have for long-term friendships. These friendships are, they come about in weird ways. They come about in ways where you're not really sure this person's going to be your friend. They might even come across as an enemy at first. However, they end up becoming best of friends with you and you go through long journeys together. When it comes to religion, you guys sort of are on the dark side lurking into occult sciences, different things. So your set of beliefs and religions might be different from other people's. Nonetheless, there's things to have faith in, there's things to show devotion to. And if you have that faith and devotion and that self-confidence that you naturally have once it's in the 11th house, you'll be just fine. Remember, you have the exaltation of the 11th house, so it's very, very powerful in your chart if you have this. For Sagittarius, it's um, very positive. Sagittarius, for the most part, across all the house I know, has been so positive in the sense that even within the 11th house, it more so pertains to 
having world friends. Like you're, the Sagittarius is somebody who views the world as their backyard and they view their inner self as somebody who can be very inviting but also has that fiery passion to destroy their enemies. So they're very balanced. They're warrior and lover. Um, so it's like the knight in shining armor for the men. For the women, it's that warrior or warrioress that could really go through life and understand and take the wounds but still keep positive. Very, very good. Um, only thing for you guys to watch out for is, is similar to Virgo, overanalyzing certain situations to the point of being paralyzed by them. But aside from that, you guys have smooth sailing there. Uh, for Capricorn, we have people that really, they don't get much friends. I'm, I'm so sorry for Capricorn in the 11th house. I don't mean this in a bad way. It's represented by Saturn mixed with what we call Uranus or Rahu. And what you have is a conjunction of, it's hard. It's, you guys will get very, very good lifelong friends just like with Scorpio, but it's gonna come through heartaches. It's gonna come through, you'll have friends that you probably do business with that become personal friends. Our friends that you've trained with, if you're into combat sports, you're into any sort of sports for that matter, that become your friend. But your friends that you have are through a purpose that you were on a journey of doing. So if you're on a journey of becoming like a real estate tycoon, the person that helps you sell houses might turn into your best friend. If you're trying to be an athlete, your team maybe might be your best friend. But it's not going to be something you're going to find at school or just in a social setting. It's going to be very precise and very much, there's going to be reasons behind it. Saturn's a very disciplinary planet, so it's all about organization, compartmentalization, and really having friends for individual needs. Um, for you, um, we have Aquarius now. Sorry, guys. Aquarius in the 11th house is... It's sticky. Um, they have random friends that will come and go, acquaintances that will come and go. It's its own house, but um, this can lead to, if you were soft-hearted or have different sort of elements within your chart, this can lead to some people actually having suicidal thoughts and because they can't seem to sustain or like really uh, just have friends around them for long periods of time. And like my advice with Virgo, I would want you guys to more so let people go on their life path. If they want to be around you for a certain segment of time, and then your purpose or your life path draws you away or their life path draws them away, then so be it. You have to let it go and you have to understand that life is a continuum where different people are going to come in and out of your life at any given time. Okay? The last one is Pisces, guys. Pisces is a very spiritual sign. So this one's really about finding people that you're going to find a religious devotion with, that are going to have your same belief systems, going to have your same emotionality. And with those things intertwined, you can make the best of friends with people. This is a bit rough for building friendships. Your inner world may be filled with anxiety, stress, because you have such a high vibration that you need to bring that universal energy kind of down to where you are right now. Once you can build that bridge, the rest of your life will go more smooth when it comes to interpersonal relationships and especially the relationship within yourself, within your own mind and heart. You gotta conjoin those things in order to actually achieve success and receive the fruits of life that you very justly deserve. Uh, but aside from that, guys, that should conclude the 11th house. Um, if you guys do have any questions, I'm giving short summaries for each of these. I can go a lot more in depth. So if you guys do any more um, like details on any of the signs in these houses, just let me know in the comments or hit me up on Instagram or through my email. Uh, but aside from that, guys, please like, subscribe. Follow me. It's it for today, guys. Peace.